Okay. No. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, here uh, the background is uh, uh, in the northern hemisphere summer, uh, the rainfall intrudes very deeply into continent from uh, India all the way through China and Japan. So uh, in a lot of the monsoon research concerns the South Asian monsoon, which uh, is uh, we you can consider as a tropical monsoon. In, in, in a sense, it's, it's well south of the westerly jet, right? Whereas uh, the East, so-called East Asian monsoon from eastern China uh, through Japan is a tilted rain band. So that rain band is uh, roughly co-located with the, the so-called subtropical Asian jet. So, so this uh, we would uh, call this uh, subtropical monsoon. So I, I think it's very distinct from the tropical monsoon of, uh, of South Asia. Uh, so, but we are not going to uh, go into a lot of details because uh, Simona uh, uh, has talked uh, quite a little bit about this, although in a kind of zonal mean context. Uh, so, in the in in a, in a surface atmosphere circulation, you see this uh, characteristic cross equatorial flow against the African coast and turn into southwesterly winds. So, southwesterly winds blow from uh, uh, Arabian Sea through India through uh, Bay of Bengal, through South China Sea, all the way into Western Pacific. Uh, whereas in, in winter, uh, the winds uh, turn into the, the kind of a normal trade winds. So there's a very strong seasonal reversal of the winds. Especially, I would emphasize the southeasterly, southwesterly monsoonal winds extend from the coast of Africa through the Philippines into the Pacific. So this is a, going to be very important uh, background uh, uh, state. We, we will make argument for uh, a, a different uh, couple mode across the Indo-Western Pacific uh, at the very end of my talk. So uh, of course, uh, people uh, study, you know, El Nino Southern Oscillations, you know, at least the Southern Oscillation uh, uh, research started uh, from studying uh, Indian monsoon rainfall, right? <laughs> so that's why uh, uh, Walker started noticing uh, there's a, a seesaw oscillation between uh, the Western, Indo-Western Pacific and uh, the Eastern Pacific. So they're all connected. So, uh, you, so that's not terribly surprising that the monsoon is affected by ENSO because you know, southern oscillation started from, from monsoon research to, to begin with. And then just briefly review uh, what, what a typical ANSO look like in, in terms of uh, temporal evolution, right? So ANSO El Nino, in this case, the four biggest El Nino ever recorded in instrumental record, uh, typically start from uh, like uh, uh, the, the summer, northern hemisphere summer, uh, growing uh, in peak, and then uh, peaks roughly in the northern hemisphere winter. And then decays rapidly in the following spring and by the following summer, like here, right? Uh, the SST anomalies in, East, in equatorial Pacific have ru roughly dissipated almost altogether, right? So you, you, it's a, it would not be terribly surprising you find a, a correlation with the concurrent El Nino conditions in the Pacific Ocean. And that's indeed people have discovered, and in fact, uh, that's probably Walker that discovered the first. So namely, if you go now with a more than 100 year uh, rain gauge observation over India, you can do EOF analysis, right? So this leading mode explaining something like 20% of the summer var rainfall variance is strongly correlated with southern oscillation. Over more than, one, more than 100 years, the correlation is 0.52, right? So that's extremely high. For, for that long period of time. So th this is a kind of a con strong correlation with the concurrent El Nino conditions. So perhaps a little bit of surprising is the second mode. Second mode explaining like 9%. And then people, uh, co so this represents a dipolar pattern, right? Between the southern uh, India and uh, uh, northeastern India uh, uh, dipolar pattern. And if you correlate, uh, this EUF with SST everywhere, you would find the north, it's most highly correlated with SST in the northern Indian Ocean. So the northern Indian Ocean warming is known to be induced by 
uh, by preceding El Nino, right? El Nino peaks in winter. So, so, so th this is a variability for summer rainfall. So El Nino affects both concurrent summer and also affect uh, the subsequent summer, right? So the concurrent uh, Ansel influence is not terribly surprising, but uh, the subsequent, the El Nino influence on the subsequent summer is a little bit uh, bizarre, right? Because I said like El Nino itself dissipated almost completely by the, the following summer. So that, <laughs> so that, that's a little confusing, but you will find, you, we will see it, it all makes sense. <laughs> So if you go to China, right, so, so a little bit shorter uh, observational record, you correlate Nino 0.3 uh, uh, with uh, uh, Chinese rain, rain gauges in China. You would find uh, the highest correlation uh, actually occur when you use uh, preceding uh, winter ANSO index than with uh, the concurrent ANSO index, right? So in other words, uh, uh, climate ANSO influence on China tends to occur in the, sub, in the post ANSO summer, right? Especially uh, this characteristic southwesterly wind anomalies transporting uh, moisture from uh, Indian Ocean and South China Sea into eastern China uh, causing rainfall variability. So this is a very characteristic southwesterly wind anomalies across uh, southeastern China. So we will come back to this. So uh, th these are uh, like two major domains of uh, South Asia monsoon and Eastern Asia monsoon uh, uh, systems. So you, you see both the concurrent ANSO effect and the post ANSO effect, right, in, in two summers. And then we can do the UF analysis of the rainfall over a much broader area, in this case, from uh, uh, covering the entire uh, North Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific. So this is uh, a blocked uh, region, right? So the leading UF, the first UF explaining 29% of the rainfall variance uh, features uh, uh, like eastward displacement of uh, deep convection. So we know that's El Nino, right? Uh, this, especially if you see like surface winds, you see westerly wind uh, developing uh, in, the, in, the, in the western part of uh, Equatorial Pacific that, that's driving ANSO to develop, to grow. So this is a UF1. And then when you correlate this PC with the SST globally, you find the, the strongest correlation is in the Eastern Equatorial Pacific. So again, confirming uh, this is a, a concurrent ANSO effect on the Indo-Western Pacific uh, summer rainfall variability. And the second mode uh, is uh, exp second mode explains uh, 15% of the variance. Uh, and then when you correlate this uh, UF with SST everywhere, you are not correlated too well with Eastern Pacific. Rather, you correlate the best with uh, SST over Northern Indian Ocean. So similar to what uh, we just saw uh, for the Indian rainfall analysis. And then for this uh, second mode, the most, the most pronounced uh, anomaly is this suppressed deep convection from South China Sea through Philippines into the Western Pacific. And that's associated with uh, uh, anti-cyclonic circulation in the low level, uh, like here, right? And especially the, su the, the, the southern part of the anti-cyclonic circulation is, uh, is to weaken uh, the prevailing uh, southeasterly monsoonal wind uh, from the Arabian Sea through Bill Bengal and South China Sea. So, uh, so warming, North Indian Ocean warming and, and, and this. So by, by you know, if, if, you, if we accept uh, atmosphere seasonal mean anomalies must be anchored by SST anomalies some, somewhere, somewhere uh, you, we have to reach the conclusion that Indian Ocean warming is, is the, the direct anchor of this SST, or this rainfall and circulation pattern. Okay, uh, so that that's just uh, you know by by simple uh, like physical uh, inference without much mechanist mechanistic uh, 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 details. Uh, so that that that's kind of a again kind of summarized here. So I I want to draw attention like in the post ANSO ANSO summer, 
the biggest uh, anomalies, both in circulation and rainfall, you see in the Western Pacific. Suppressed rainfall and anticyclonic circul circulation, therefore, increase the atmospheric pressure <laughs> at the surface. So this is a kind of illustrate, uh, summarized here. So uh, the, the black contour is the autocorrelation, lag correlation with uh, Nino 3.4 uh, in December uh, here, right? So the El Nino develops like this and decays like this. And then here, uh, uh, the, the black line and uh, uh, the, the orange bars represent the no Northwestern Pacific atmospheric uh, anomalies, the correlations with ENSO. So you kind of see uh, uh, the, the most pronounced uh, Northwestern Pacific response to ENSO occurs in the decay phase of El Nino Southern Oscillation and also extends all the way into uh, the following summer, whereas uh, the, the Nino 3.4 has already dissipated, right? So there, there's no El Nino to speak of in the equatorial Pacific, but yet the Northwestern Pacific anomalies somehow know there was El Nino uh, six months ahead. That's because the Indian Ocean is uh, responding to El Nino by warming, right? So this is also well known. So El Indian Ocean tends to uh, become anomalously warm uh, following El Nino. And this Indian Ocean warming uh, somehow persists through the following summer. So that, that led us to propose perhaps Indian Ocean, after all, is not just a passive slave to El Nino Southern Oscillation. It has active role to play, more like a capacitor. So El Nino is, of course, the, the most powerful uh, agent for internal variability. So it's like a battery uh, charging uh, the Indian Ocean when El Nino is still strong. But then if you take away the battery, uh, El Nino, uh, the, the capacitor of the Indian Ocean would persist for a while and discharging uh, climatic anomalies to the surrounding region, including India and China and the Northwestern Pacific. So that, that's a conceptual model, right? Uh, you know, uh, Without, without presenting any mechanistic support for the argument I, that I just presented. So now I'd like to turn a little bit uh, to make a, a somewhat mechanistic discussion as to why the Indian Ocean uh, warming would have impact on the Northwestern Pacific, for example. So uh, this is showing uh, like a post El Nino summer, uh, the correlation with Nino 3.4 in, in the preceding winter, okay, so this is a bit confusing. So it's, the, plot, the correlation is to illustrate the post El Nino summer uh, anomalies in the ocean and atmosphere. So already shown like the Indian Ocean remains warm in the post El Nino summer. So uh, that warming through perhaps quasar equilibrium adjustment, uh, uh, Simona uh, talked about this morning, you can anchor uh, and drive a, a gill pattern. Matsuno gill pattern, right? So carbon wave propagating east and uh, Rossby wave on the sides. So this, uh, by the way, is a, a complete, uh, the, the contour here is, is a correlation between uh, tropospheric temperature, average between 850 millibar to 200 millibar with the uh, uh, preceding uh, Nino 3.4 SST index. So the correlation is as high as 0.7 uh, in, the, in the subsequent summer. So this is not schematic, okay? This is a, from observational uh, correlation. <laughs> so it just looks just like a Marcelo Gill pattern in schematic, but it, it's a real uh, observations. So uh, you, you can imagine uh, under the, the warm uh, troposphere, uh, the pressure would drop. And pressure, uh, so especially the carbon wave, you expect to see a, a low, anomalously low sea level pressure here. Uh, so you would, uh, you know, without friction, you would call for uh, easterly wind anomalies in the free troposphere, lower troposphere. But then in the presence of, because we are talking about like, surface winds, right? So there, 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 there is a friction, and friction would drive the surface wind uh, into the low pressure on the equator, and therefore uh, in the sa at the same time causing a divergence <coughs> in the off equatorial region. So that divergence would trigger, uh, would, call, would uh, suppress the convection, and then the suppressed convection is going to enhance the, the high pressure 
So that, that, that convective feedback would amplify the system. So this is surface wind correlation uh, pattern. So you see the winds are doing anticyclonic circulation, and then the, the southern branch of the anticyclonic circulation uh, is to weaken uh, the, the, the southwesterly monsoon winds. Okay, so the, the, this is a, a, a mechanism how the Indian Ocean warming could lead to a suppressed convection and anticyclonic circulation in the northwestern Pacific Ocean. And uh, coincidentally, uh, Fred uh, uh, sent me this paper. I find it's quite amazing. Uh, he did uh, something like uh, uh, Andrew Gill did by imposing an isolated sea surface temperature anomaly patch in the dashed uh, circular region. But his model is uh, moist, including a moist uh, convection and interaction with the circulation, right? So the response naturally is going to be uh, different from because the, the convergence divergence uh, are going to drive additional uh, rainfall convective anomaly and modify the circulation. But nevertheless, so in, imposing a positive anomaly here, of course, you are going to get uh, uh, positive rainfall anomalies. But remarkably, uh, away in the Alpha Equatorial region to the east, you see like suppressed uh, rainfall anomaly mm. on either side of the equator because his, his uh, background state is symmetrical between northern and southern hemisphere. Whereas uh, we are discussing northern hemisphere summer, so the southern hemisphere is not conducive to convection. So you, we have to chop off Fred's uh, figure uh, in our mind, you know, chop off this part, uh, uh, keep this part. So this part is, uh, is an uh, I think is, uh, is uh, ana analogous to observed the northwestern Pacific uh, suppressed rainfall and anticyclonic circulation in response to uh, Indian Ocean warming. Okay, so I, I think the, the, this is a, yeah, th this is the only model results I'm going to show. But I think uh, it, it's quite remarkable there is some uh, agreement here. It's also consistent to our modern experimentation mm -hmm. with SSK uh, prescribed in uh, Albemarle prescribed in the ocean. But uh, uh, the, the theory uh, by being one, yeah. to uh, mention uh, the maintenance of yeah, yeah, yeah. Pacific, uh, Western Pacific. Yeah. So how do you uh, comment? Uh, I'll, I'll come back to this point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'm a bit confused about what the contours and the shading are. Oh, the, the shading, shading contour and shading are both uh, rainfall response to, uh, to an imposed uh, uh, positive SSC anomaly in this uh, circle, circle the region. Just significance. Line. Oh, thick line above, above the thick line, thick line is uh, significant. So uh, uh, perhaps uh, Fred did like a, a, a 10 year or 20 year simulation, right? And then, uh, yeah. 150 years. 150 years, okay. <laughs> yeah, so highly significant. <laughs> yeah, so, so all this uh, kind of a, uh, Atmospheric so far, right? So, so like uh, people know, uh, I, like Indian Ocean is is going to warm following an El Nino, but they people didn't really address why the Indian Ocean warming should uh, persist into summer, right? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess it makes sense. Uh, Indian Ocean would warm, but why it would uh, persist into summer? So, I'm going to yeah, John. It's not obvious to me why. Why the Indian Ocean would warm? Um, uh -huh. I know it's probably obvious to everybody else. What, what is the reason for the yeah. warming? Uh, there are several. So why why is uh, often invoked uh, argument is uh, the eastward shift of the convection. So then the Indian Ocean is uh, would have less clouds, right? So that that would uh, warm the SST. But people don't have done like a heat budget analysis. That proved to be secondary. That's not important. Uh, the important part people discover, discover from a, a heat budget analysis is the wind induced latent heat flux. So somehow the wind uh, reduces uh, uh, after El Nino. Yeah, over the, yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I actually, next I'm going to make an argument. The, the, India, the sustained warming uh, in the North Indian Ocean through summer and sustained uh, atmospheric anticyclonic circulation, they are the coupled, they form a couple modes. So, so I, I will show some evidence. So, uh, yeah, just this, this part, right? So the lower panel shows, uh, uh, repeats what I just said, like uh, suppress the convection rate, reduce rainfall, and increase the somewhat increased rainfall over Indian Ocean. And then you, you see this dipolar mode, like uh, southern India increase and northern India uh, decrease. So that, 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 that's the UF2 of Indian rainfall variability. But that, that's actually uh, not very distinguished. What's really big is uh, this one, the, the suppressed rainfall. And then this is a Matsuno gill pattern in the tropospheric temperature. So this is a post El Nino uh, anomalies in the atmosphere. Warm free troposphere temperature suppressed rainfall on the, on, the, on, on the flank of this Kelvin wave. And then uh, uh, this suppressed rainfall uh, is going to generate, is going to be coupled with uh, anticyclonic circulation at low level, right? And then the, the anticyclonic circulation on the southern flank uh, is going to be uh, easterly wind anomalies. And easterly wind anomalies are going against the southwesterly wind, right? So that, that's going to keep uh, North Indian Ocean warm. And the warm, warmer North Indian Ocean is going to send warm Kelvin wave into the Pacific, reinforcing that uh, anticyclonic anti circulation. So I, I believe, uh, you know, in, in a sense, you know, look at this, right? So in the first part, I mentioned El Nino has a center of action in the eastern half of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. So the center stage of El Nino of course, is is the equatorial Pacific. Yeah, sure, most part. But in the in the in the in the post El Nino summer, the central stage of El Nino actually shifts shifts to Indo Western Pacific. The most persistent El Nino induced anomaly uh, are found over Indo Western Pacific for a reason. Because exactly because there's a couple mode that that uh, provides provides the positive feedback that uh, would uh, would uh, go would go against the the dissipation you know thermal dissipation you know the radiation whatever yeah so I I think that the the the, the post El Nino uh, su summer uh, the shift of the anomalies into the in the Western Pacific. So there's a so there's a warm North Indian Ocean, yeah. which generates a, a Kelvin wave yeah. response, uh -huh. which is associated with an anticyclone. Yeah. And that anticyclone reduces the monsoon wave yeah. over the North Indian Ocean, yeah. which is positive for you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so is that exactly because this coupled mode is selected by ANSO? So you, we, we see uh, in the post ANSO summer, uh, in various uh, parts of the Asian summer monsoon region, you repeatedly uh, see this post ANSO signals, exactly because there's a couple mode. So again, you know, it, maybe the connect, uh, I would draw a similarity from the second part of my talk, right? El Nino is a mode, but it, it, when you hit a, Eastern Pacific with a hammer like in El Nino. In March, April, it developed a dipolar meridional mode. Whereas you hit uh, in the Western Pacific with the hammer of El Nino, you're going to see this, uh, I call IPOC, right? In the Western Pacific, ocean capacity. <laughs> so this is, a, I believe, is a couple mode. I, I, I don't have time, but actually, we have uh, done some uh, model experiments to show uh, this, this, this mode can arise even without El Nino. I, 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 I don't have time. I don't want to go to too much uh, technical detail. But you know, just from observations, you, 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 I hope you, 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 you can see uh, uh, 
you know, the, the, the anomalies are organized in a way uh, to form positive feedback. Okay, so uh, insect uh, mentioned, uh, there's another uh, anomaly, anomalies, uh, pattern anomaly I have uh, uh, not uh, spoke of too much. So you see on the, on the, on the eastern part of the anticyclonic circulation, Remember that the tree, the, the monsoonal winds are westerly, uh, penetrating through uh, South China Sea into east, extreme Western Pacific. But you, the tree winds remain uh, in, the, in much, much of the subtropical Pacific Ocean. So the, the, the anticyclonic circulation uh, is actually uh, causing uh, a cooling here. So the cooling is, in a sense, is also handy because locally you can suppress rainfall, right? So suppressed rainfall is going to excite uh, low level anticyclonic circulation. So the warming here and the cooling here are the, are the optimal configuration for anticyclonic formation. And this thing actually starts in, 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 in the previous uh, preceding uh, spring season. So we have uh, some argument for this to develop into this. So, so it's more complicated, but I, I just choose the, uh, the simple part <laughs> to present here. But, but uh, I, I think they are complementary. So this is the optimal configuration for, I mean, I, I think nature always choose the optimal mode pattern, right? Uh, you know, always uh, the pattern, uh, na the, 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 all the patterns nature choose makes most sense, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Yeah, so, so this is, a, I, I would say, a bit of a surprise to me. I, I, initially, I just thought I, I tried to use the, uh, the well-known Indian Ocean warming to explain the, the anticyclonic circulation and suppressed rainfall. But only later, uh, I recognized they are actually coupled. So it takes time for, for you to see uh, the true beauty of nature. <laughs> so OK. Uh, Stuck. What happened? Okay. Yeah. So just uh, to to summarize. So uh, and so uh, I think uh, the the slides I have shown so far uh, illustrate uh, and so affects the Asian summer monsoon in both concurrent and subsequent summers. So the concurrent summer effect is kind of obvious, but uh, you know, uh, Walker noti no noticed uh, more than 100 years ago. But there are increasing evidence uh, indicating uh, ANSO has an uh, effect on the subsequent summer. And then this uh, Indo-Western Pacific Ocean capacitor uh, we view as a couple mode seem to give rise this coherent, recurrent post-ANSO summer anomalies as illustrated by those uh, two UFs. So UF1, uh, concurrent ANSO effect. Uh, UF2, uh, post ANSO effect. So all this uh, seem to uh, now kind of fit together uh, to a degree. I, I, you know, as insect ask me, there, there are things that we still don't understand. But, and also, every El Nino is different. So, you, so people have tried to use uh, this post El Nino mode to forecast uh, what might happen in eastern China, right? Especially uh, 19, uh, uh, 2016, uh, you know, Nino 3 point, in terms of Nino 3.4, is one of the largest uh, El Nino uh, in, on instrumental record. So by this, people would predict, if El Nino, that El Nino is typical, people, would, people actually predicted a major flooding uh, event along the Yangtze River Basin uh, over China. But it, the prediction proved to be correct for, uh, for the f first half of the summer. And the second half of the summer is uh, all went out the window. <laughs> so again, you know, I said nature present, you know, is, is beautiful. But their, their, their beauty uh, we still haven't seen or haven't recognized. So I, I think maybe in the, in, for China, Eastern China prediction, I think because it's a subtropical mid-latitude monsoon system, 
So maybe the, the limit, intrinsic limit uh, predictability on the seasonal time scale, just because the internal variability of the atmosphere is a lot bigger than in the tropics. So there, there might be a limit uh, as to what we can predict. But that certainly doesn't limit our ability to understand, even if it's the internal variability, you said random, but random happens for a reason also. You know, it's just, uh, you know, we're convenient. <laughs> yeah, so that, 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 so the paper, uh, part, most of uh, what I talk about in second part is, uh, is summarized in the review paper uh, in advanced, uh, advanced atmospheric science 2016. You, you can go to take a look. So, yeah, so, okay, yeah, in sec. Yes, uh, excellent talk. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the post to SST, SST uh -huh. pattern, yeah. which is uh, uh, recent years SST pattern associated with ENSO, uh -huh. like uh, after 1980. Yeah. But uh, when you say uh, uh, the, the, the pattern, SST pattern in the ocean, uh. Uh, in, 70s and 60s, yeah. it's much, uh, much tight. Yeah, much weaker also. It's much stronger, uh, SST, uh, warming. <coughs> uh, uh, SST. Oh, in, uh, in concurrent, uh, concurrent summer. Concurrent oh, okay. summer. Yeah, concurrent okay. Uh, winter. Okay. Concurrent winter. Uh. So that probably somewhat uh, mode one and mode two, uh, and some, 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 some decades combined. Yeah. Uh, some decades uh, separate. Yeah, I think the concurrent ANSO mode is very robust, as long as uh, there is ANSO. The post-ANSO mode uh, somehow uh, experiences quite uh, substantial multi-decadal modulations. So we, we don't understand, you know, one, one ex explanation is uh, uh, the post El Nino mode requires uh, relatively large El Nino amplitudes. So El Nino, we know like uh, the variance uh, has modulated over the instrumental record. So it has been high since the 70s and uh, was high about 100 years ago. And in between, it was uh, kind of a mediocre, like modest. So maybe the modest answer would have a difficult time to go through uh, the following summer, just because so many things are going in between, right? So you need a hit with a really big hammer in order to, <laughs> to see the, the mode, perhaps. Okay, I, I, I'm done, so uh, I'm open for questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 